22 to 59. This is just the 10th meeting all time between these two great programs. Just the second time it has happened here in Durham. Duke won back in 1990 in the only previous meeting. And Arizona with a quick two. Balo on the slam. Umar Balo has really improved his running of the floor in the last two years. Last year he combined with the Julius Tubelis. This year he's the focal point inside. Tyrese Proctor at the point. One freshman in the starting lineup for Duke. That's him with the ball. Jared McCain to a wide open Mark Mitchell who missed the Dartmouth game with an ankle injury but back in there to start this game tonight. All right, Arizona gets the ball down the floor so quickly. Transition defense is going to be vital. Pella Larson with a strong drive and a terrific start for the Wildcats. Arizona came out throwing haymakers in this game and they expected to. And Pella Larson, I believe, is Arizona's best player. Scored 15 in their season opener. Jeremy Roach the kick. Filipowski wide open. Misses the three. Duke is the smaller team. The glass and the paint are going to decide this game. And a foul on Ballo as he and Filipowski, not surprisingly, getting physical down in the paint. Well, Ballo's a rim runner. He goes from one end to the other right under the rim to start out of possession. John Shires, second year as the head coach here at his alma mater. Of course, outstanding years, becoming the first coach ever to both win, to win an ACC tournament championship as both a player and a head coach. And went undefeated at home last year in his first year as Duke's head coach. He's not suffered a loss yet in this building as head coach. Mitchell on the drive this time. Knocked away by Keisha Johnson. McCain gets it back, and Mitchell lays it in. Well, what a pass by Jared McCain. More contact inside. They play on, and back come the Blue Devils in transition. The pull-up three a little bit strong for Tyrese Proctor, and a call going against Filipowski. That's the kind of foul that Filipowski has to avoid. Couldn't get the rebound. He grabbed. And you don't want to get give that up. What a fantastic pass through traffic. Just threading a needle for the freshman Jared McCain. 6-3 from Sacramento. Part of the second ranked class in the country. Jared McCain the only starter. We will see. We likely will see all three others including Caleb Foster, a freshman from Harrisburg, North Carolina, who had a really nice debut against Dartmouth. McCain's got his hands full guarding Larson. Kylan Boswell, just 18 years of age, reclassified last year, played as a 17-year-old, but now he's got the keys to the car here in his second year. Yeah, he does not look like an 18-year-old. He is strong, compact, and he really got his defender on his hip, but he did shoot a two. Duke was able to get him off the three-point line. He's an excellent three-point shooter. Her Creesa has moved on. He's a Mountaineer right now, so Boswell inherits the starting point guard spot. Filipowski for three. Filipowski can roll off that pick and roll, or he can pop. And Pella Larson had to pick him up, just couldn't get enough pressure on him for the shot. First touch, I believe, there for Caleb Love, and he didn't have it long. He shot Johnson, the transfer from San Diego State, a little bit strong on the jump hook. Well, he was going against Jeremy Roach off a switch, and Roach made him shoot over the top, stayed in front of him. And then Roach shooting over the top, but he missed the three. And look at Johnson getting down the court. Gets back his own miss and has it rejected by Mark Mitchell. Mark Mitchell is a difference maker. Did not play in the opening game against Dartmouth. Did not play in the NCAA tournament game against Tennessee. But the left-hander is an outstanding defender. Timed that beautifully, even with contact, to block that shot by the San Diego State transfer, Keyshot Johnson. First sub of the game as Umar Balo has gone to the bench. And 7-2 freshman Motieus Krivis from Lithuania has checked in. Number 14 in blue for the Wildcats as Caleb Love turns it over. It's too much dribbling for Love along the baseline. There was nothing there. He's played in this building three times. He's played well in this building. Also had the great game against Duke in the Final Four a couple of years ago. 
But boy, the crazies were waiting for him tonight, weren't they? McCain, and it rattles out. Rebound Johnson. Boy, it won't show up in the box score, but Ke Keyshawn Johnson did a terrific job of help defense there on that little drive. Larson a miss. Back comes Duke. Roach can't turn the corner. Filipowski scrambles after it. Now Mitchell. Good matchup with Johnson. And a foul called on Keyshawn Johnson. Third year down in Tucson for Tommy Lloyd after a 20-year run as Mark Fuse lead assisted up in Spokane. And an all-time record 61 wins, Jay, in his first two years as the head coach. Well, both Tommy Lloyd and John Shire are the two brightest young coaches in the country. Both are excellent recruiters, tacticians, and you know, I was at practice for both teams yesterday. And I think Arizona does as good a job as anybody of taking a scouting report and communicating it to the team so they can act upon it positively in the game. One of the first things, uh, one of the first phone calls John Shire got after he got the job was from Tommy Lloyd saying, hey, you want to play us? And they turned it into a home-and-home -home series. Duke will be in Tucson at the McHale Center November 21st of next year. Two of the great arenas in college basketball, Cameron and McHale. And love seeing matchups like this. Love into Crevis, knocked away by McCain. Touch pass by McCain, knocked away by Boswell. Boy, they are all over the place. What a great catch by Crevis, but couldn't hang on to it. Deep three by Boswell. And into the hands of Roach. And that's what Duke's going to have to do against Arizona. Gang rebound. Larson kept it alive. And now Larson commits the foul, knocking Roach down. Our first time out of the game, and we got a good one. Bruin tied at six early. More things change, the more they remain the same, and that coincides with the story of Caleb Love and his return to this historic building where the name has changed on his jersey. However, his will to win against this particular team remains the same. He said that I have a different sense of freedom with this team, but he said heroics is not what I'm looking for. But going back to the Final Four, we saw the, the heroics, 28 points, a dagger three, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention he also had 22 points in the spoiler game against Duke right here to give Coach K his last loss here. So I know that for Caleb Love, he said it's about the team, but mostly we've seen the heroics from him in the past. Angel, thank you. Great to have you with us. Mark Mitchell gives Duke the lead. So Caleb Love with a couple of big, big games against Duke in Mike Krzyzewski's last year as the head coach of the Blue Devils. Arizona going with a smaller lineup. Pella Larson at the four. And Mitchell's everywhere right now, Jay. You talked about it. What a difference maker he can be. Ooh, and a block is called on Pella Larson. That's going to be two on Larson, right? Larson, the primary defender, just trying to maintain legal guarding position and stay in front. But looked like Mitchell just got past him a bit to draw that foul. But Larson is such a, a versatile player. He's having to come out with that second foul. Plays both ends of the floor. Outstanding passer. Terrific shooter. Was the Pac-12 sixth man of the year two years ago. Could have won it last year, yeah. but he started seven games. And it well, kind of took him out of it. Poor planning on his part. <laughs> so, so he's gone to the bench, maybe for a long time. Jaden Bradley. A transfer from Alabama is into the game, and also a very talented freshman, K.J. Lewis, number five for Arizona from El Paso, Texas. And we mentioned Coach K, and for just the second time, Jay, since he retired, he is here watching a game at Cameron. He came to the Notre Dame game last year, Mike Bray's last trip as Notre Dame coach to Cameron. And Proctor in and out and out of bounds to the Cats. Arizona with this small lineup. It is not unusual for Tommy Lloyd to go small. They had a one of the bigger lineups in the country last year with the Julius Tabellas and Umar Ballo, but that was probably 50% of their minutes. This is Lewis. Spent a couple of years in grade school in Tucson. Grew up an Arizona fan, but spent his high school years in Texas. Now Bradley. 
Gets his man in the air, misses the shot. Crevis, and it goes down to tie the game. Crevis has such great hands. He's going to be a really good player. Makes tough catches. Very skilled, can score with either hand around the basket. And really, for the, the key for Duke in guarding Arizona is make Arizona take tough, contested, non-paint twos. Grievous laying off of Young, who's not going to shoot the threes, looking for somebody to pass to. Well, Arizona has a defense where they lay off non-shooting big guys, and Crevis will just clog the lane. What a find there from Proctor to Young, but through his hands, out of bounds, still Duke ball with just two on the shot clock. And with Crevis in the middle of the lane, that's why Filipowski coming in for Young right now. They're going to have to guard Filipowski, and that will open up the lane. With Crevis in the middle, it takes away cutting and driving lanes for Duke. Now with Filipowski out there, he can stretch that defense, and Crevis has to go out and get him. Roach had to get the shot off, hit the side of the backboard, and that's a shot clock violation. Now take a look at Crevis right in the middle of the lane. He's guarding Ryan Young, and he's out by the three-point line. Well, you can't cut and get anything in the lane. It's really smart. They've done that ever since Tommy Lloyd's been at Arizona. It's really effective defensive strategy against non-shooting big guys. Bradley turns the corner off the glass and good. Arizona by two. Bradley transferred from Alabama. McDonald's All-American, and he can really drive the ball. Nice find. Pass. Filipowski to Proctor. Previs down with the rebound. Boy, what a good outlet pass to get out and run. Little stutter step by Bradley, and then he dribbled it out of bounds. Fifth turnover already committed by the Wildcats. Bradley's not a great shooter yet, but he can get by people and get to the rim. And that was a difficult two, but he made it. But he can get all the way to the rim and get fouled. Great matchup at the point. Boswell, Proctor, two young guys who both reclassified last year. Boswell's only 18, Proctor's 19. Floater by Roach will go, and that'll tie the game. But you've got two of the most talented young point guards in the country in these two in this game. Well, Proctor's an NBA prospect that is a projected first-round pick. And Boswell has really improved. He had a great end to last season. Good pass. Balo can't get it to go. And Jeremy Roach, very dangerous in the mid-range. What a great pass. Beautiful bounce pass into Filipowski. Boy, how good of a day was it for Duke fans when Kyle Filipowski said, I'm coming back and healthier this year, right? Double hip surgery in the offseason. The lay-in will go for Lewis, and he got knocked down as well. It is tied at 12. You asked, we deliver. Jay Billis, 94 feet with Tommy Lloyd coming back. What an honor. That disturbs me a yeah, little bit. Yeah, well, it disturbs a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first car? My first car was a 1978 mint green Fiat Brava. Nice. How about yours? Still runs great, you tell me, huh? Yeah, it runs great. <laughs> uh, 1984 butterscotch brown Ford Mustang hatchback. Butterscotch brown. Butterscotch pudding brown, baby. Again, playing off Young. And that's Umar Balo in yep. the middle. That's even bigger to clog that lane. Pass deflected, and it's Arizona ball. A quiet start for Caleb Love. He's attempted just one shot so far. But he's got to get something off a of ball reversal. Good look for Johnson in the corner, and he'll bury it. Well, he's going to be a big factor, Keyshawn Johnson, for this team. He is from Oakland, California, and did a great job for Brian Dutcher at San Diego State. But he can he can guard one through five. You know, a lot of guys say they can guard that, but he can really do it. Now he's guarding Caleb Foster, a one. McCain back to Foster. Two freshmen in the game at the same time in the backcourt for the Blue Devils. And a very scrambly possession here for Duke. And it's going to be a shot clock violation. If Arizona can get a piece of the paint, turn the corner as K.J. Lewis does right here, 
Filipowski goes in trying to protect that paint and just an easy kick out to a standstill shooter. Keyshawn Johnson in the corner. But what a defensive possession for Arizona. They forced Duke to dribble and not pass, and they dribbled out the shot clock. And their staff has the feeling this could be, and when you think Arizona, you think pace and running the floor and offense, but they've got a chance to be a pretty good defensive team this year. Don't I they? think they're going to be very good. They're much deeper, and they're athletic. Johnson again. Not this time, and Filipowski down with another rebound. But with this lineup, they can switch everything on the perimeter. McCain, who is a terrific shooter, knocks down a mid-range jumper to bring Duke back within one. He's so compact with the way he plays. Always down in a stance, just impacts winning. McDonald's All-American and the Gatorade Player of the Year in California last year. Love turns the corner into Johnson. And did they get McCain? And I think McCain got called for the foul. Well, there's the biggest Arizona Wildcat basketball fan I know. That is Terry Francona, three-time manager of the year. He's headed to Cooperstown as well as soon as he figures out how to get there. They're going to let him in as, <laughs> as soon as they can. I've been on driving trips with him. It's an adventure. But he absolutely loves Arizona. He lives down in Tucson. He goes to every game that he can. Has never seen a game here at the Cameron, but he found his way here to Durham to see his beloved Wildcats play tonight. Well, Caleb Love is known for the three-point shots he puts up, but when he decides he's going to drive it, gave a little shot fake to Tyrese Proctor. He is very dangerous in the lane. He's such a good free-throw shooter. He should strive to get fouled six, seven times a game. How do you think he has changed or it benefits him or however you want to phrase it, you know, getting a change of scenery three years in Chapel Hill now playing for Arizona? Well, I mean, I, I think this system fits him very well. He's just a really good player. And, you know, like, I don't know what happened last year in Chapel Hill, why the Tar Heels didn't play better. But I know at his best, Caleb Love is a truly outstanding player. Originally transferred to Michigan, but Michigan would not accept all of his credit, so he had to open it up again and went down to Arizona. And he's going to be more off the ball. Boswell, the primary point guard, Love probably won't handle the ball as much as he did as a Tar Heel. McCain. It won't go Arizona ball as we go down to Angel Gray. Guys, going back to what you were mentioning about Caleb Love and what this is, how this is different for him at Arizona, he just briefly mentioned to me, I'm playing more free. He had a smile on his face when he said that as well, not having to be the hero, but Tommy Lloyd on him, he said he's pretty tough-minded, built for the attention. They can go and play good basketball and, and a good game without him playing out of his mind. He said we've given, given him the gift of coming in and getting settled, and I feel like he's done that. Angel, thank you. And what are the odds that his second game in an Arizona uniform would be back here in ACC country? Well, I'm sure his phone has been blowing up ever since he got back in the state of North Carolina. Duke ball after the officials talked it over. Ron Kruver, Doug Sermons, and Brian O'Connell, the officiating crew here tonight. Filipowski being guarded by Ballo. He needs to put him in some ball screen situations. Out of bounds, still Duke ball, and the freshman McCain is going to inbound it. Jalen Blakes is in the game for Duke. He played extremely well in their uh, opening game win against Dartmouth. Scored the ball, defends three steals in limited minutes. Both of these teams, Jay, it feels like have a chance to be pretty deep. And, you know, if the coaches use all of that depth, sometimes you pare it down the rotation as the season goes along, but they've both got a lot of options. Yeah, especially depending on personnel they're playing against. Right. Absolutely. Out of bounds to Arizona. But right now, Arizona's having to make decisions because Tommy Lloyd has to protect Pella Larson. He's got those two fouls. The question is, when do you bring him back? Do you wait till the second half? He's a veteran player. Love a little discard there to free himself up for a shot, but couldn't knock it down. Just good physical defense, forcing Love to take a really difficult two. Mitchell's been assertive in this game. Too strong on that one, and Lewis the rebound. Boy, Keyshot Johnson is such a good defender. What a catch. 
And a foul is called. It should send Crevis to the free throw line. Great bounce pass. Great catch by the big fella in traffic. 7.56 to go in the first half. Arizona by three. He's got seven points, three rebounds on the pick and pop, knocks down a three, and then the pick and roll. Throw into the basket is a beautiful pocket pass from Jeremy Roach, and then the tough two over Umar Ballo, but this is his second foul here. Both of Filipowski's fouls could have easily been avoided. One was a defensive rebound, just a grab, and then that in transition. But John Shire leaving Filipowski in the game. A lot of coaches will take a a really good player out as Tommy Lloyd did with Pella Larson when he got his second and try to save him for the second half but John Shire going to trust Kyle Filipowski not to pick up his third before the half. Meanwhile Arizona now with a four point lead. Crevis makes the first. One of two freshmen from Lithuania on this Arizona roster. The Wait. other one Paulius Morauskas. A 6'8 forward. We have not seen him yet, but uh, he's going to be a part of their rotation this year, that's for sure. I think when Arizona gets the ball back, they've got to go right at Filipowski. Grievous with a rejection. And Arizona in transition, led by Love, who has it taken away. Now it's Duke's turn to run. McCain. Yes! Boy, then got a foul on Lewis, just laying into Filipowski. What a turnaround because of Tyrese Proctor's hands. Arizona had a break. Proctor takes it away from Love and then McCain taking it the other way, just running to the three-point line. Could have dumped it off to Filipowski. Then Lewis just laid right into Filipowski. And now Kyle Filipowski going to go to the free throw line, try to make this a five point play. What a turnaround. Yeah, it's the seventh foul on Arizona. So now Duke is into the bonus. The second foul on Lewis. Let's go down to Angel. Did you mention how Kyle Filipowski had the surgery on both of his hips to shave them down to allow him to be more flexible and bendy. But associate head coach Jay Lucas said, I nicknamed the sophomore two hip flip in the offseason, which he says has helped tremendously as far as his concept coming into this ball game. But I talked to Kyle before the game. He said the journey to get back to this point was long and arduous. He told me there was about a two month stretch where he couldn't move without assistance off of the couch. So he's consistently working on his mindset, said he couldn't do it without the staff and team. More explosive, more confident in his ability to be explosive. And he was pretty good last year playing with a couple of bad hips. Johnson no and Krivas giving Arizona some good minutes gets back the loose ball now he's looking for help and throws it out of bounds off of Christian Reeves and Angel Gray's point now Kyle Filipowski able to uh, play pain free and I think he said after the game against Dartmouth it was the first time that he could remember that he wasn't thinking about being in pain when he was playing kind of crazy because he was pretty good last year playing in pain Love looking to get going. Misses the runner. And Caleb Love just one for four. Two points so far. Even though this Duke team is small in the backcourt, playing a three-guard lineup, they can put pressure on the ball. They're making it difficult on Arizona right now. Love from the baseline, and Arizona back on top. Is coming off that little staggered screen. When Caleb Love gets his feet set, he is a really good shooter. It's when he tries to get his own that sometimes you know, he takes some off balance ones because he can make contested shots. Proctor from the elbow, nicely done, and it's tied again. And that was against a really good defender in Pella Larson. So Larson back in, playing with a couple of fouls. What a fake. Rivas got Reeves in the air twice, but couldn't convert. And he's really good with that left hand around the basket. Tommy Lloyd says he's better with the left than the right. And he's right-handed. Back out to Proctor. Eight assists, one turnover in the season opener against Dartmouth. Had a terrific 
freshman season, especially in the back half of it, the second half. Up top, and it's slammed home by Reeves, the 7-1 sophomore from Charlotte. Really good minutes by Christian Reeves. Who played sparingly last year, but will be a much bigger part of the team this year. Love again. Revis another rebound, puts it home, and he's fouled. How about that rebound and put back? How quick he was getting back up. Now coming up Tuesday, what a night here on ESPN. The State Farm Champions Classic, Duke and Michigan State in the first game, Kentucky and Kansas in the nightcap. And then to bring it all together, the college football playoff top 25 ranking show. Boy, Reese looks good, doesn't he? He always looks good. <laughs> was that a rhetorical question? It was kind of. Well, Reese just texted me and said, don't I look good? <laughs> How much fun is the Champions Classic? We'll see Duke again against Michigan State. Uh, the Spartans with an early loss would bounce back with a win there, one and one, and then Kentucky and Kansas. Just one of the great nights on the college basketball calendar. Well, Keisha Johnson had an initial putback opportunity, but then Boswell almost tip dunked that in, got fouled. Look at this play by Krivas. That That is just a great play, not only to position himself and push Reeves under the basket and get the rebound but to go back up that quickly get fouled and make it look at the rebounding difference on offensive glass 10 to 0 and that's where the size of Duke's guards can be an issue Duke is going to have to gang a rebound even though they beat Dartmouth handily, they barely out-rebounded them. So this is obviously going to be an early season talking point for these Blue Devils. Well, the keys, the keys in this game are protect the paint and win the battle of the glass. You're talking about for both teams or for both teams. Both, both teams? both teams. Proctor for three. Long rebound to Roach. McCain for three. And Boswell down with it for Arizona. Arizona's guards get down there and rebound. They get their noses dirty and help out. Larson. Yes. And Arizona leads by four. Just a smart drive by Larson. He knew that Young was going to have to be on the high side against Ballow. And Ballow just shielded him off. And it was an easy path to the basket. Young steps in, kicks it out. Nice shot fake. Floater by Proctor. Wow. Will go and one. What a great shot fake and drive. Ballo comes over from the weak side. Just a beautiful shot fake. Little floater got hit by Ballo after he let it go. That's a big time play by Tyrese Proctor. And number two on Ballo. And he is coming out. So look at how small Arizona is right now. The biggest guys they've got on the court are Johnson and Larson. That means Larson's going to have to go to the four, and he'll be guarding Mitchell. Arizona's going to have to combat their size disadvantage with this lineup with pressure. Boswell aggressively into the paint. And banks it home. Boy, how about the way he turned the corner and got into the paint and the body balance on that shot? That's an 18-year-old. Yeah, I'm loving this point guard matchup. Proctor and Boswell, two terrific players. What are they going to do when they grow up? <laughs> Young trying to muscle his way in, but he walked. Well, that just shows what a great defender the Keyshot Johnson is. You know, stayed between Young and the basket, didn't go for any fakes. And wound up getting a turnover out of it. Just solid defense by Keyshawn Johnson. Boswell for three. Way too strong. And it's out of bounds in Duke Ball. 18-6 to Commerce early? Yeah, Commerce, they absolutely could not guard the basketball or guard the three. They got it going a little bit right there. Antonio Reeves coming back, knocking down that big three. They've settled into the game, but it has not been pretty for the Wildcats. That's not Kansas they're playing. No doubt. Commerce joined D1 just 
two years ago. We'll take you through all the Friday night college basketball coming up at the half. Dan, back to you. Coach, thank you very much. We'll see Kentucky, as you mentioned, against Kansas Tuesday night of the champions. They're dealing with some injuries right now, Jay. They are uh, short on some bigs right now, so they're going to have a bit of a different look to them. But they, when they decide they want to guard, especially their guards, Boy, Kentucky can be special on the defensive end before this season's over. Was that deflected? It was not. It's Duke Ball. Just a miscommunication. Jaden Bradley cut when Pella Larson thought he was going to stay. Roach defended by Lewis. Into the paint, the pull-up. Still loose. What a play. Boswell kept it alive. Lewis into Jaden Bradley, and he's got to kick it out. And Boswell will bury the three. Boy, Jaden Bradley drew a crowd and was able to kick it out to a wide-open Boswell. But how about Boswell getting on the floor for that loose ball? Boswell, nine points, three rebounds, a couple of assists, and a steal already in this one. Not giving up any second shots. Young got his own. Missed again. Young usually so efficient around the basket. And you're right, they're just not biting on any of the moves or the fakes. Johnson inside, and Arizona's up to a six-point lead. Timeout, Blue Devils. Arizona just putting their head down and getting to the rim to draw the defense. Just running up and down, getting easy layups, as you talked about, though. They're digging in there tonight. They, this has been a gritty performance by the Wildcats. Well, Jaden Bradley draws a crowd. Three Duke defenders around him. He just kicks it back out to Kylan Boswell. Wide open, step in three. And a beautiful drive along the baseline by Lewis. Just drops it off to Keyshawn Johnson. And John Shire has to call a timeout. Remember, Jaden Bradley, when he played at Alabama, just as a freshman, was second on that team in assists. They got a lot of weapons, that's for sure. Arizona picked to win the Pac-12. Duke picked to win the ACC. First time in 10 years these two programs have met, and again, they'll meet again in Tucson next year. Proctor wants a screen from Filipowski. Keeps the dribble alive. The three over Crevis is short, and Johnson down with another rebound. That's a tough shot. Step back almost as an afterthought over the outstretched arm of Crevis. Who's 7-2. I like when they say, you know, he's a legit 7-2, as if being 7-1 isn't, you know. Yeah, that. <laughs> he's a legit 7-2, and he's all of that. Lewis baseline off to Crevis. Boy, and he had a chippy that would have made it an eight-point game. He just didn't go up right away. Just hesitated a bit. But Duke is giving up the paint a little bit too easily. Grievous got turned around, lost track of Filipowski, who makes him pay. Anytime Filipowski is in any sort of ball screen situation, you know, he can pop, that makes it difficult, and he can roll. And Krivas just got a little bit twisted up. The ball went past his ear. And then he winds up putting Filipowski on the line for a three-point play possibility. Number two on Krivas. The reaction you hear is Caleb Love coming back in the game for Arizona. And it's Filipowski who's already got 11 points in this game at the line. And he's earned every one of them. This has been a physical first half. Revis draws the double team, finds Johnson. Boy, what a cut. Duke didn't rotate down. They went with the double. They call it fire. And go to double the post. You don't want to let it out ball side, but you certainly don't want to let that little drop-off pass in the lane be executed. Boy, what a great pickup Keyshawn Johnson is after getting all the way to the national championship game with San Diego State a year ago. Proctor nowhere to go. Good help by Krivas, and then he still re was able to recover to Filipowski. He is talented. 
Mitchell. Love got all of that, and it's another shot clock violation on the Blue Devils. Well, Arizona is just busting their tails on the defensive end. Great block by Caleb Love, and the shot clock goes to zero. Six turnovers committed by Duke, and three of them have been shot clock violations. And right now, 30-second timeout here in the final minute of the first half. BN. Produced by Film 45 and directed by award-winning Joey Jacoby, the documentary is an intimate and compelling look into WNBA superstar Parker's journey through basketball and life in her own words. You won't want to miss it. And I won't miss it, but, <laughs> but did she take your autobiography title there? You wouldn't, you wouldn't. Unapologetic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, no. Arizona going even smaller. Pella Larson back in. Bodies flying. Proctor down, Larson down. Four second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So they can take it all the way down and still have time for a tip in. Love for three. In and out. Larson left it short. And a foul going against Arizona. Looks like they got Johnson. Yep. Number two on Keisha Johnson. And he's got a surprised look on his face. Just short. I'm not sure whether Larson was passing it to him. That just looked like rebounding to me. That's still going to give Arizona, if Duke's able to, Christian Reeves, even able to knock this down, Arizona's got a chance to get it down court and get all the way to the rim with 4.9. What can Reeves bring to the Blue Devils this year? Well, he's got size. He can protect the rim, and he can be a lob threat. Now, good length, and he, he's given really good minutes in this game. One of two. They've got four seconds. Love gets it off and hits it. He banked it home at the buzzer and gives Arizona eight points to zero for Duke and then the 10-3 run at the end of the half. Just the second game of the season for each team. And love seeing these kinds of matchups early on in the season. Filipowski surrounded. Forces it up and in. Boy, a strong move against a double team by Filipowski. He wanted a foul. Ballo brought that arm down, but wasn't called. Just an excellent strong play by Kyle Filipowski. He had 25 against Dartmouth. He's got 13 so far here tonight. When Jared McCain getting down to defensive rebound, it's going to have to be a five-man job for Duke on the defensive glass. Shot fake by Roach. And knocked away cleanly. Back comes Arizona. Love baseline into the chest of Filipowski for a charge. Our first chance to talk about the new uh, rule or the way they are interpreting the block charge call this year. Yeah, it used to be you had to, you had to be set before the offensive player left the floor. Now you have to be set before his plant foot, his last foot is planted on the floor. And much Phil tougher to take a charge, right? It is much tougher, yeah. but it looked like Filipowski was there. You like the change in the rule? I think it's fantastic, absolutely. Let's go down to Angel Gray. Yeah, I was able to catch up with Coach Shire, and I asked him about the adjustments. He said there's adjustments to be made on both ends of the, of the floor. Offensively first, he said, I don't like how we're playing iso ball. We need to play together. They do have the six assists on 13 made field goals. But, of course, he mentioned they're out dominating us on the glass. We have to rebound. It has to be important. It has to be a priority. Both trips down the floor, they got an interior touch, guys. Angel, thank you. Do you consider rebounding in general to be a strength that we'll see from Arizona this year? And in general, will it be something that John Shire and company really have to be focused on this year? Yes. If You're here at Cameron. Larson hampered by foul trouble in the first half. Knocked out of bounds. Still Arizona ball. Well, that was a kick ball, so it goes to 20. 
And it'll be Boswell to inbound. Got to watch Caleb Love coming off a stagger here. Ballo trying to back down Filipowski. And he does. Boy, that was just strength from Umar Ballo. He just backed him in, and nobody came with the double team. They decided to let Filipowski go one on one in the post, and he just got backed down. Ballo started off at Gonzaga, of course, really came into his own last year. Filipowski with the answer for three. At the other end, he's got 16. Now the double team. The deflection. Bala will finish the assist to Boswell. What a play by Kylan Boswell. That ball was about to go the other way, and he shot in front, got the ball, and then dropped it off to Ballo. Great play by Boswell. Will not turn 19 till after this season is over. Boy, bodies are flying in this thing. Filipowski got knocked down. It's five on four. And Larson takes advantage with a three. Pella Larson is an outstanding basketball player. Yeah, he plays every facet of this game well. 6'5", senior from Sweden. Transferred to Arizona from Utah. McCain open. Rattles out. Boy, McCain is a good-looking player. Filipowski takes it away. And just not a good pass by Caleb Love. Nothing there. Filipowski all the way and lays it in with the left hand. Tough for Umar Ballo to guard him in space. Johnson with a tough catch. Banging with McCain, and McCain takes it away. Proctor, back to McCain. Is this any fun? This is the way basketball is supposed to be. Turnover. Larson and Ballo can't connect, and it's back to Duke. So. McCain with a great job just staying in front of the bigger and stronger Keyshawn Johnson. Gives it up early, gets it back, and finishes, turning defense into offense. And the question now, how is Arizona going to respond after getting punched here? McCain again. And Balo deflected it and corrals it. Larson into Ballo. Too strong. Good challenge up top, but what a catch off that pass by Larson. Mitchell. And out of bounds off his leg. Four minutes and nine seconds into the second half. The pace, if anything, has picked up. Arizona still in front. Lorraine's granddaughter, Ava, who has committed to play tennis here at Duke, just like her big brothers, Jake and Connor do. Congratulations to the whole family, to Sherry and Thomas, their parents, who were both uh, athletes at Notre Dame. Dickie V's about as proud a grandpa as there is. And Jake and Connor are going to have their little sister alongside here at Duke playing tennis starting next year. That is awesome. Four-point lead, Arizona. Lewis, no, out of bounds. And it belongs to Duke. Even on that drive, Lewis having to finish with the left hand, essentially going away from the basket over Mitchell. Well, he's a good-looking basketball player. Love on Proctor right now. A rare moment where Boswell is not in the game for the Wildcats. Duke trying to run more things out of the middle of the floor. Good play by Jeremy Roach. Just go right into Krivas to pick up that foul. But you run things in the middle of the floor, it's a little more difficult on a basket cut to give help. And Jared McCain's taking advantage of it. It opens some things up. 
number three on Motieus Crevis, who has given Tommy Lloyd some very good minutes tonight, just his second collegiate game. And he comes up with a steal. A good feat by Crevis to get in front and knock that pass away. Not a great pass by Mitchell, but great defense by Crevis. You know, you see a guy his size, a freshman, and maybe there's an assumption, is he, is he a project? Is he raw? He's none of that. Crevis is a player. And what a beautiful cut by K.J. Lewis. Back to six. And that is a block. Larson coming over, and maybe last year that's a charge. This year that's a block. Three on Larson. This terrific hands by Krivas to take that away. And then Bradley does a good job of playing off of two feet and a great weak side cut to the basket to make himself available by K.J. Lewis. Larson, by the way, has gone to the bench. Again, number three, he has really been limited in his minutes tonight. Well, Arizona doing a nice job of switching on that out of bounds. Good ball movement. And Roach left wide open at the top of the key. Well, Caleb Love went for the steal, didn't get it. The reversal led to a wide open three. Roach really coming in into his own as a scorer last year. Oh. What a finish by Keisha Johnson right in the chest of Filipowski. Well, just pick and roll on the open side. And a beautiful pass, but what a catch and finish by Keyshot Johnson. 6-7 dunking over a 7-footer. Now the 7-footer knocks down the 3. He's got 21. Boy, that's a lot to ask for Krivas to have to guard the dribble and then recover out to a 3-point shooter in Filipowski. Love no. Proctor fouled by Lewis. Kyle Filipowski sets that little screen, just pops back, and Krivas has to guard Jeremy Roach to try to take away that drive and then recover out to Filipowski. But Keyshawn Johnson, the transfer from San Diego State, he had 14 points in the championship game against UConn last year. Boy, that is a big-time finish over Kyle Filipowski. What a game we got here in Durham. Two-point lead for the Wildcats. Proctor using the screen. Deflected. Johnson got a piece of it, and Boswell's got it. Boy, Johnson's, his impact is both ends of the floor. Kickball. shoelace issue for Kylan Boswell tying up his shoe for a moment is now for the first time tonight Sean Stewart a freshman from Windermere Florida another part of this highly thought of recruiting class ranked number 19 on the ESPN 100 into the game for the first time and Stewart is a spectacular athlete a standing vertical of 36 inches Breaking Zion Williamson's Duke record of 35 and a half. And he gets up even higher when he's moving. <laughs> Boswell takes a bump. And it's down to Stewart. He's got the rebound. But Duke doing a better job in this second half of defensive rebounding. Roach a seam. Yes, it is time. Roach is so good in the mid-range. Dribbles it off his foot, and it's Duke ball. Over the years, it has seemed like Jeremy Roach, when Duke needs a basket, he can get into the lane and make something happen. Excellent body control. He's just got a, a, an outstanding pull-up game. Jeremy Roach went over 1,000 career points in this game. Who's going to get credit for that? I think Stewart. Either way, Duke has its first lead since it was 25-23. And a foul on the floor. Look like they got Filipowski. Yeah. Keyshot Johnson at inside position here. 
And it looked like he knocked it in. Yeah. Well, maybe Stewart got it from behind him. But that's the athleticism of Sean Stewart. Mitchell on Boswell. Got two on the ball. They can't take advantage. Bradley cut off on the baseline. Finds Ballo. Left it a little short. Mitchell the rebound. Now Mitchell took a shot, but still he made Ballo take a tough two. Roach the kick. Good fake. Proctor still going and has it taken away. What hands by Bradley. And the finish at the other end to tie it. Well, I thought Bradley might give that up to Boswell, but he made the smarter play by just going right into the chest of the defender and getting that left-handed finish. That was a big-time play by Jaden Bradley. Caleb Foster in the game for Duke. It's like a heavyweight fight. Yep. Ballo. And an offensive foul. And Ballo had the opportunity to just shoot over the top, but just ran Stewart over. But what a great steal here by Jaden Bradley. Looking to... Anybody watching this game? We're sure you're enjoying it as much as we are. It is a good one, just as we had hoped. It's tied at 54. Nine ties, seven lead changes. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Angel Gray with you here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And there is a long way to go in this one. And foul issues could be a deciding factor in this. Filipowski has three. Keyshawn Johnson has three. Pella Larson. Umar Ballo. Yeah, Duke in a better shape, relatively speaking, than Arizona. That pass deflected off the backboard. Johnson has it. And Arizona looking to run if they can. But Arizona's pressure is excellent. Good pass. Larson the bobble and the kick to Bradley. And Larson, time. Larson has an excellent shot fake. Six to shoot. Boswell with Filipowski on him. The step back three. How about this guy? Well, he shot the ball toward the end of last season so well. And he's continued it into this season. There's a lot of dribbling on that possession, but when you have a player like Kylan Boswell that can make an individual play at the end of a clock, that's a luxury. Filipowski having to work hard. Good defense by Keyshaw Johnson. Yeah, he forced that one, but Johnson made him take it. Now Ballo. Remember, Filipowski's got three. And now it'll be Stewart called for the foul. Well, Duke wanted to come with the double, but Ballo made a quick move, and the double couldn't get there. Ballo with the little pick and roll. They had a switch. Just a little step back by Boswell. That's a big-time play. Can I throw some numbers at you? I'm not going to listen, but do whatever you want. <laughs> 12 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, a block, no turnovers for Kylan Boswell. That's a good line. Wow. That is a good stat line. And he's not done. Wait, how, about the, roll for Ballo. how about the improvement of Umar Ballo? I mean, when he was at Gonzaga, you're wondering how long is his development going to yeah. take? Yeah, he transfers to Arizona. Uh, Tommy Lloyd, got, who knew him, he recruited him to Gonzaga and got him in much better condition. And I know playing with the Julius Tabellas. I mean, if you play with that guy, you're going to learn how to run. Yeah. And now he's running the floor. He's playing extended minutes. He was the MVP of the Maui Invitational last year. Just spectacular development. Yeah, he really went from playing sparingly in his first year to a rotation guy in his second year to a star in his third year. Can't finish this one. And it's Duke ball. Well, you bring that ball down. Arizona doesn't look to just pressure you. They're trying to take it from you. Here are the statistical improvements for Umar Ballo over the last three years. And he basically doubled everything up from 2022 to the 2023 season. 
Mitchell for three. And nobody on the glass for Duke. Now, Ballo did a nice job of recovering late. How about the pass? Boswell to Ballo and one. The question is, who did they call it on? Was it on Filipowski or Mitchell? They gave it to Mitchell. Villanova back healthy. And Villanova's a top 20 team. Kyle Neptune has a good squad coming back. Missed free throw. Ballo looking for the three-point play. Arizona by six. Duke ball. And right now, Keyshot Johnson guarding Filipowski when he's out setting those screens. But they got a switch. Now Filipowski being guarded by Boswell. Into the chest of Ballo. It won't go, but it's tipped up and in by Mitchell. And when Ballo had to come over from the weak side, that opened up the offensive glass. Johnson with a reverse. Duke ball. Boy, the length of Mitchell inside makes it really difficult to finish over him. That was a big difference last year when Duke played Tennessee in the second round of the tournament. Mitchell was injured, didn't play. And Duke got knocked out in the second round last year. Arizona got knocked out in the first round by Princeton. As Proctor buries one from the corner, and all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. Duke's ball movement in the second half has gotten much better. They're getting a piece of the paint and then playing out of it. And Arizona's had a tougher time getting into the paint. They've gotten some post touches. Here comes the double. Great help by Roach to take it away. Boy, it looked open, but Roach closed that door in a hurry. And once again, the Blue Devils come down the court looking for the lead. And Duke using both sides of the floor. Mitchell swatted away by Ballo, gets it back. And Larson down with it for the Wildcats. And Larson can get it and go. He can rip and run on his own. And Tommy Lloyd wants a timeout. 7.44 to go. Heated battle here at Cameron, Arizona by one. As meanwhile here, one point game, Arizona on top. Duke has made a couple of runs, Arizona's weathered the storm, Duke keeps coming back. It has been everything we had hoped it would be. In the second half, Duke's done a better job protecting its paint, and they've done a much better job on their defensive glass, not giving up as many second chance opportunities to Arizona. Love guarded by Filipowski after a switch, turned it over. Roach almost lost it, almost lost it into the backcourt, but Duke retains possession. It looked like Caleb Love was just trying to draw contact from Filipowski. Felt like he had an advantage. Jay Love now three for nine, seven points. He's got six turnovers in this game. Another good rebound by Pella Larson. They swing it to Boswell. Ten to shoot. Arizona's got to get more weak side cuts. There's the high low with the pressure. It takes it away. So Larson launches a three and buries it. He is a player. He defends. He rebounds. Good passer. And you leave him open. He's going to knock a shot down. Pella Larson's going to play in the NBA. I agree. Four point lead Wildcats. Filipowski the handoff to McCain, little runner, tipped out by Young, still loose, and out of bounds, Duke ball. Well, Kylan Boswell really goes after loose balls. If it's long or it's loose, he's going to get it. Hot potato, hot potato. Boy, both teams just scrapping. So right now, Pella Larson having to guard Kyle Filipowski. And Filipowski needs to take him down into the post. Roach. One point game. 
Just a miscommunication between Lewis and Larson. Lewis picked up Filipowski, and Larson felt like, hey, man, I got him, and he was late recovering to Jeremy Roach. Previous to Love. Bounce pass. Lewis got it back, and a whistle and a foul on the floor against Ryan Young. Jeremy Roach set a little up screen to get Kyle Filipowski in the post, and Larson felt like he had him, but Lewis called switch. And Larson was late getting out there, and he gave a, an earful to Lewis right afterwards, saying, I had him, man. Stick with your guy. Roach now with a dozen, as you can see, eight of them in the second half. Arizona ball after the foul on Young. Neither team. Love into the paint. Bounce pass inside. Crevis comes up with a rebound, needs some help. And he turned it over on a travel. Just switched his pivot feet. But what a catch by Crevis inside. And that's the kind of play that Caleb Love needs to make. Get into the paint, draw multiple defenders. Crevis just couldn't get it up off the glass. Just bobbled a little bit and watched he changes his pivot foot here because of the pressure. And the official's right on it to make the call. That is the 17th turnover committed by Arizona. Duke has turned it over 12 times. Crevis to the bench. Ballo back in. Keyshawn Johnson has returned as well. And Duke has converted off those turnovers. They've got a plus six advantage, 18 to 12, and points off turnovers. Proctor. Roach baseline. Reverse. Ballo got it. Boy, what a great hesitation move by Jeremy Roach, but Ballo just erased it. Larson. Ballo lays it in. Arizona by three. And Dan, that was set up by Pella Larson's shot fake. Just gave a shot fake, got into the lane, able to dump it off to Ballo on the cut. Beautiful play by Pella Larson. A couple of extra passes, too, by other Wildcats who could have taken a shot. Johnson with an impressive block on Filipowski. And if Johnson didn't get it, Ballo was going to. Ballo coming and blocking. That was a great hesitation move. And then on the other end, great shot fake to get into the lane, draws Filipowski up. And then Ballo finishes off the cut with the left hand. Just really good basketball by Arizona. 4.28 to go here in Durham. Arizona by three. Out And at least at the moment, Boswell not on the court. Well, you wouldn't be surprised if there were some cramping issues with as hard as these players are playing. And Kylan Boswell has been outstanding in this game. He's got 12 points. Eight rebounds. He's the leading rebounder in the game. And five assists with only one turnover. Proctor gets it into Filipowski. How'd that pass get through? And that is a strong rebound in traffic by Johnson. Boy, went after it with two hands. He contested the shot and still turned around to get up for that rebound. Keyshot Johnson's having a terrific game. Larson. Ballo, guarded by Young. Jump hook, short. Young doing a nice job of just making him shoot over. Roach the kick. Proctor the three. Boy, you can't ask for a much better look than that. It'll stay with Duke. Now Duke's ball movement has been much better in the second half than the first. I think Angel Gray was saying that, you know, a little too much iso ball in the first half, John Shire told her. But this second half, they've moved the ball much more effectively. Proctor inbound to get right in front of Mike Krzyzewski, who is here in person watching the game tonight. Filipowski up and in, and it's a one-point game. Boy, strong drive. Didn't look like either Larson or Ballo wanted to pick up a foul there. Larson, such a good decision maker. The missed three, though, by Jaden Bradley. 
He's the guy getting Boswell's minutes right now with Boswell on the bench with some sort of a leg injury, it appears. Maybe a cramping situation, as we mentioned. Young back out to Filipowski. They got lots of time. Probably a good decision by Filipowski. Could have gone over Larson, but just reset it. Proctor. Filipowski got knocked down by Larson. Here comes Arizona. Bradley coast to coast, and he draws the foul. Well, it just took a little bump by Proctor to pick up that foul. Just couldn't finish it. Boy, Arizona gets a rebound, and they are gone. You know, Filipowski was on the deck. That put Duke a man down. But this team can run. Kylan Boswell getting ready to check back in. So that's great news for the Wildcats, probably for Bradley, who's the free throw shooter. for Bradley. Boswell still at the scorer's table. Were you the kind of player that when there was somebody at the scorer's table you intentionally missed your second one so you could stay in? No, I accidentally <laughs> missed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> missed them both. Boy, so they don't get any points and they don't get Boswell back into the game. Proctor up top. Johnson guarding Filipowski, and he can guard him on the perimeter and inside. McCain, and it's knocked out by Love, so it is still Duke ball with four seconds on the shot clock. Caleb Love doing a nice job with help defense, and he went after the ball. It went off him. But he was disruptive on that drive. Boswell back in. Tough pass. Not a lot of room down there. And Arizona switching all these screens because of the lineup they have in. And a 30 second timeout taken by John Shire with now 3.3 on the shot clock. What a week 11 ACC Network football lineup we have for you tomorrow. It starts at noon Eastern with BC hosting Virginia Tech. Then Pittsburgh and Syracuse at Yankee Stadium at 3.30 Eastern. And then we cap the day with Duke and Carolina. 8 o'clock Eastern, all three games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Both Duke and North Carolina pole bound. Mike Elko has done a great job with this Duke football team. They're so athletic. Kylan Boswell with the headband right in the middle of that huddle. And he has been outstanding all game long. Seemed like he's gotten every loose ball. He has been the leading rebounder in this game for both teams with eight. And he has knocked down some timely shots. Really run the team well. The step back after the switch against Filipowski. That is a excellent stat line for the sophomore. 30 minutes in this game and 30 hard minutes, gritty minutes played by Kylan Boswell tonight. Roach. Yes! Right off the inbounds, a three-pointer. Nowhere to go for Larson. It stays with Arizona. Boy, Dan, not surprisingly, Jeremy Roach, when a big shot is to be taken, he's the one that takes it. Coming right off Ryan Young, Boswell trailing him. There was zero hesitation off the catch. John Shire asked the officials, we're under two minutes, he asked them to look to see who it might have gone out of bounds off it, but the officials don't have to grant it if they're certain, if they feel certain about who knocked it out of bounds. So it stays with Arizona. And it stays with Arizona again. Well, they're going to look at this one. They're going to look at it. Yep. 
Ballo was behind Ryan Young. But it looked like Ballo was the one that took a swipe at it. That doesn't mean it didn't go off of Ryan Young, but that's one of those bang-bang plays that the referees can take a look at. So Ballo knocks it. And it looked like his middle finger was the last one that touched it. And they'll slow it down that much. Wow. So the call, the ruling is Arizona ball. Now watch both of their left hands. They both had it. Boy, that's as close as it gets. Yeah, I don't think you can overturn that. Yeah, either. that's tough. Well, if you slow it down even more, the first angle, it looked like Ballo's finger. But, I bet, you know, it, I agree with you that it's so close. But unless they really slow it down, you know, that's a Zabruder film type of deal. And it remains with the Wildcats. Boy, what a big shot Jeremy Roach just hit. Started slowly tonight. He's up to 15 right now. Filipowski leads all scores with 23. Three and double figures for Arizona. Larson baseline. Bounce pass inside. Johnson to tie it. Proctor just not able to rotate down to take that pass away, but a smart pass by Pella Larson. Ten ties and nine lead changes in this game. But what a great matchup between Johnson and Filipowski. Filipowski just bowling his way in, but he missed the shot. It is Duke ball. And they're going to look at it again. Wow. Now Larson reacted like, wait a minute, I didn't touch it last. And that's probably why Brian O'Connell going just to make sure. Larson might have a case. Arizona might have a case on this one. It hit Larson, but did it hit Young after? Larson there, but then Young knocks it out of Larson's hand, I think, don't you? The question is, when, when Young hit it, does it go through Larson's fingertips? Right. And that's how close these plays become. And they only look at them the last couple minutes of regulation and overtime. See the, see the fingertips? Did it touch that last? That's how minute a detail they have to look at. So it's clear that that Young's action knocked it out, but did it graze his fingertips there? So he knocks it out with his right hand. That's Young's right hand. So that's the action that knocks it out. Boom, there. But does it, it looks like it grazes his fingertip right there. His being Larson's? His being Larson's. Yeah. See, his, see his left hand there? Yeah, yeah. So he knocks it, and it looked, did it touch, did it not? And again, sometimes the deciding factor is the original call. Right. And it was called Duke on the floor. It'll stay Duke. Eleven on the shot clock, a minute 19 on the game clock in a tie game. Good switch by Larson on Roach. Roach driving. Pull up. Filipowski the rebound. Got it! What a game he's having. 25 for the second game in a row to begin the season. Boy, after, after all the rebounding difficulties in the first half, an offensive rebound puts Duke up by two. Good defense by Filipowski to slow down Ballo. Love inside to Johnson. Yes! Oh. And a chance to give them the lead at the line. Boy, what a play by Caleb Love. Just gets a piece of the paint, dumps it down to Johnson, and Johnson finishes a tough shot. That's not easy to be able to get that in without using the backboard at that angle. And not only did he get the bucket, he got the foul as well. He plays bigger than 6'7", doesn't he? He's been fantastic yeah. in this game. Just fantastic. Arizona by one. Right now for Arizona, this is about getting a big stop on the road. The ball in the hands of Filipowski on the perimeter. Now Roach. Got the switch. Now Love guarding Filipowski down low. Ballo edging over to help. 
Proctor cradles it. Traveled with it. Right, and that was because of Ballo. Ballo was playing that drop coverage where he's just in the middle of the lane. Had to come out a little bit. But then when Proctor brought it back in the lane, Ballo was back in there. So Ballo's playing off of Young. And just right in the middle of the lane, Proctor drove in. And Ballo's presence caused the turnover. And the right call. Timeout, Tommy Lloyd. Arizona with the ball in a one-point lead with 28 seconds to go. This is one of the great things about this sport, that two teams this good can play this kind of a game early in the season. Somebody's got to lose it, but it doesn't wreck your season to play in this kind of game. And really right now for Arizona, it's about being strong with the ball and stepping to the line and hitting free throws. And for Duke, they don't have to just come out and foul. I think they come out and play and l use a little bit of time, but they go after the ball without fear of fouling because you're sending Arizona to the line for a one-and-one one if you foul. Mm -hmm. But go for the steal. You know, try to get a trap. If they get the ball inside, double. But you don't have to be worried about fouling. But Tommy Lloyd's going to want to put his best handling lineup and his best free throw shooting lineup on the floor right now. And going small, you know, I, I would imagine he'd take out Umar Ballo here. Yeah, yeah you can see Ballo was standing behind oh, standing some of right the other there. players. There you go. Yeah, he's not sitting on the chairs, so he is behind the, the coach right now. So you're right, he is coming out of the game, at you, least for the moment. You go with your most experienced handling lineup and free throw shooting lineup. Arizona has struggled some at the line tonight, just 6 of 12. But it's really about who gets fouled. Right. And right now they have Larson, Love, Boswell, Bradley, and Johnson on the floor. Now Bradley missed a couple, missed those two after he got fouled on that breakaway. Duke undefeated at home last year, beat Dartmouth here a few days ago. So John Shire undefeated as a head coach here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. But that is in jeopardy right now. With his coach looking on. I wonder if Coach K is looking at the timeouts going, geez, I, where did all this entertainment come from during timeouts? <laughs> when did they start doing this? <laughs> Boswell to inbound. The There's trap on Love. Larson back to Boswell. They get it over. Love comes to get it. And he got fouled by Mitchell, so Caleb Love is going to the line. And Love is an excellent free throw shooter. Shot 77% from the line last season. One and one for Love. In a building he has been several times before when he played eight miles down the road. Free throw blockouts are big here. Also a tip out. If Love makes this and it's a three-point game, Duke does not have to have a three. Just get it to the rim. And if the defense collapses, you can kick it out for a three, fine. But you just want to get a quick score. Made them both. Looks like John Shire uh, looked like he wanted a timeout, but now they'll play. Roach with a crossover. Mitchell into the paint, lays it in, and again, it's a one-point game, but down to 5.4 seconds remaining. Well, they need to look at the clock. A little bit of extra time went off after the, the timeout, or after the ball went through. So I think there's going to be more time than 5.4. I think it's going to be over six. Now, the clock's supposed to stop after the ball clears the net. And it clears the net at 6.4, yeah. 6.5. See, it kept going. Doug Sermons 
along with Ron Groover and Brian O'Connell, the officials in this game. Sermon's talking to Chris Carwell about the clock situation, and they have put it to 6.5. That was good by you. Price is right, though. You were just under. I was just, yeah, yeah, exactly. We stayed good. safe there. Under without 4. going over. Yeah. Thank well you, done. Bob Barker. <laughs> So now, what's your strategy if you do? Again, go for a quick steal, or but then you got a foul right away. You got a foul right away it. here. You, you go for the steal, quick trap, but you got a foul and put them on the line. Because even even if Arizona makes both, you're still going to have you know five seconds to get it down court and try to tie it up. And Jaden Bradley can run the baseline here. So Ballo out of the game again with Arizona having the ball. Four guards and Johnson in there right now. Duke wants to make Arizona catch it going back toward the baseline. And now it looks like Ballo has to go back into the game. Well, he could just go deep. Or, or set a screen and go deep. So they've disallowed this substitution. Ballo in, Bradley out. Boswell to inbound. Larson, and he is fouled with barely any time coming off the clock. Each coach still has a timeout left. Larson last year, an 83 and a half percent free throw shooter. And what a luxury when you can put this kind of lineup on the floor that can knock free throws down at the end of the game. So let me ask you the question. If he makes both and if John Shire does not call a timeout, do you want to see Arizona foul before Duke can get a three point shot? I think you foul once you get across half court. Yes. First things first. And I think Arizona, if this shot goes in, Arizona still wants to press up. And don't don't let Duke get a run up. Made them both. Three-point game. Timeout. Boy, how about Caleb Love and then Pella Larson stepping the line and making those pressure free throws in a very difficult environment. Boy, how, how about this game? Like, Fantastic. Arizona comes to play in Cameron next year. McHale... And that'll be just two of the great yeah. arenas and great fan bases in basketball. This is great for the sport. The more of this that we can see, teams of this caliber playing early in the season, the better it is. And I look, Dan, I think the players love it. Mm. Like, I, th I think every Arizona player wants to say, hey, I played in Cameron. And every Duke player said, I, hey, we went out to McHale. Yeah. We played in Allen Fieldhouse. We played at Assembly Hall. Yeah. These are bucket list games for players. Yeah, and neutral site games have their place, obviously, in this sport, but you're right. This is special. I mean, th this is the earliest that Duke fans have ever put up tents. Right. They're tenting yeah. in November. In November, yep. Pay $80,000 a year in tuition. <laughs> Your kid's sleeping in a tent in November. Boswell, Lewis, Larson, Bradley, and Johnson for Arizona. So the question is, will they foul or will they just play it straight? If they do foul, you don't want to foul until you get right around or past half court. You know, try do your best to make Duke catching it going toward the ball. And don't allow any advance pass. Mitchell inbounding, nobody on the ball into Roach and they foul a little early. I yeah. think they could have waited longer. Yeah. Extending but, the game actually. Yeah, but yeah. around five seconds is OK, but it's still. You know, Duke's first Duke's got to hit the free throws, but they fouled a good free throw shooter. But for Ballo and Johnson and then and then both Lewis and Larson have to have to pinch in. Arizona is out of timeouts. Duke got one. Uh, Duke has one left. And Dan, if there is a miss here, 
Filipowski and Young in those second slots. They can tip if they can tip the ball back. Yeah. You can steal a three here. Makes the front end. Boy, Ballo and Filipowski getting all kinds of tangled up in the lane. Two guys who do not shy away from physical basketball. Boswell out of the game again, limping again. And again, maybe it's a cramp. And Bradley, yeah. who just came into the game, needs to be alert if the ball's tipped back, if there's any kind of miss here. But there's still plenty of time. You know, I think Roach wants to make this. One point game. Bradley confirming that he can run the baseline into Love and they'll tie him up right away down to 4.6 and Love will head to the line again and that's the 10th team foul on Duke so it's two shots now for Love. Well, Caleb Love has had some big moments in this building. And some big moments against Duke wearing a Carolina uniform. And you have to think he's enjoying stepping to the line for this kind of pressure situation. He handled it very well the first time. Knocking them both down. Duke has one timeout. John Shire is already talking to one of the officials. It looked like about using that timeout if there's a make here. Boy, he's, him again. he's got ice water in his veins. Yep. Those are big time free throws. He made four. Pella Larson made two. That's how you win big games on the road. Yet it's still a one possession game with 4.6 to go. Boy, you talk about coaches, too, as terrific as they are. Tommy Lloyd's in his third year as a head coach. John Shire's in his second year as a head coach. It's not just the players who are experiencing, you know, a lot of intensity and incredible moments as they play in these games. It's these coaches, too. Well, in this game, win or lose for either team is going to be of great benefit. I mean, this is a final exam taken in November and that you don't let Duke get up a three. Right. So if they fouled last time, it stands to reason they'll foul again this time. Right? It does. But you can you can wait a little bit longer than fouling right away. I mean, obviously, you know, you're going to foul under four seconds, but make them dribble once or twice. Boswell not in the game for Arizona as they come out of the huddle for Duke. It is Young, Filipowski, McCain, Roach and Proctor. McCain, the freshman, but again, a gifted shooter. Now Keyshot Johnson back playing kind of center field in case there's a long pass. Which there has to be. Larson tipped it. Love has it. Lewis slams it and Arizona wins it. They're, they're sending the teams back to the bench. I'm not sure.